and share responsibility for continuing the fight against corruption. Meanwhile, the head of the Administrative Control Authority, Hassan Abdeshafi, was chosen as president of the conference. Minister of Justice, Planning, International Cooperation, Immigration, Local Development and Social Solidarity are taking part at the conference the trans from December the 13th to the 17th. Dubbed towards a world without corruption, the gathering will set out an international agenda for fighting corruption over upcoming years and a plan for post-pandemic recovery and for ensuring political and economic. In the sidelines of the conference, the Prime Minister visited the pavilion of the Administrative Control Authority at the International Conference Center in Sharm el-Sheikh. He praised the efforts made to complete the exquisite pavilion so as to highlight the authority's role in combating corruption in all its forms. And to shed more light on the anti-corruption conference, we're joined over the phone by Professor of Political Science, uh, Dr. Noha Bakr. Good afternoon, Dr. Noha. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be with you. Our pleasure also. Uh, Dr. Noha, how do you see the significance of holding the ninth round of the UN Convention Against Corruption uh, in Sharm el-Sheikh here in Egypt? Well, every three years, the United Nations Convention Against Corruption holds a conference. And the last conference was in the United Arab Emirates, and this year the conference will be in Egypt. Yes. Actually, the conference uh, being in Egypt has a significance. First, we're having in this conference five heads of state for the first time that will deliver their speeches at the conference virtually. We also have 15 ministers to attend. 20 of them will be attending virtually. More than 30 heads of anti-corruption bodies will be ar from around the world will attend. And most important is we will have 268 NGOs who have consultative status with the United Nations and 257 ordinary civil society associations. Mm -hmm. Having all this in Egypt, coming to Egypt for the conference, reflects that Egypt has se taken serious steps in its obligations to uh, towards the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. We know that this convention is uh, joined by 189 states, and in Sharm el Sheikh, 144 states will be represented, which reflects also that they feel that Egypt is secure to come and attend, and that Egypt is taking all the precautionary me measures to avoid that anyone catches COVID-19. Yes. It reflects also that Egypt is taking serious steps. As you know, that Egypt has announced its strategy in, uh, in, in, uh, in abiding to the Convention Against Corruption in 2019 till 2022. Yes. And we're taking different measures when it comes to fighting corrupt corruption on different avenues that the Convention holds. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, digitalization. We've made serious steps in digitalization and digitalization is one of the elements where corruption could be curbed. Also, we're taking serious steps in women's role in uh, fight, fighting corruption. And Egypt is taking, um, is now working on its, building its strategy for women in peace and security. And we know that unbalanced development corruption leads to uh, breaching security consequences. Also. Yes. Uh, we're, we're working on preventing corruption through raising public awareness. We're working on uh, 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 all elements, uh, different elements that uh, restrict bribery and avoid that bribery takes place. So mm -hmm. to answer your question, in short, the conference being held in Egypt reflects Egypt's efforts to combat uh, and to curb corruption, reflects Egypt um, abiding to its international obligations, and the serious steps that have been taken and the security of Egypt. Yes, uh, Dr. Noha, uh, this year's edition is attended by 2,170 representatives from 144 countries. Now, how would this enhance the international cooperation in the do domain of preventing corruption? Simply, uh, this allows for a dialogue. This allows for sharing experience on how to reduce corruption and bribery on all its forms. It, it reflects also that uh, they will be attending, sitting, discussing how to strengthen national institutions and build capacities at all levels, especially uh, when it comes to countries who are still working on 
uh, being being enabled to fight corruption. Uh, also, uh, it, it, the one element which is very important and is new in this conference, which is ways to recover from COVID-19 pandemic and move forward within fighting corruption. And uh, there will be a special session against, against corruption and fighting corruption regarding COVID-19. Uh, yes. There will be several topics where uh, the attendees will share their experience, will share, will share south-to-south experience, will share south-to-north experience, will learn from each other because we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We can learn from each other experience in order to uh, be able to apply the Convention Against Corruption. Yes. Uh, what's the role of the civil society members as uh, 257 representatives are participating in the event? Well, actually, we have 267 NGOs that have consultative status at the United Nations in addition to another 257 ordinary civil society associations. It reflects that, we, that it's not only states who are responsible for fighting corruption. Actually, states work hand in hand with the civil society and believe in the efficiency of working hand in hand with the civil society. And this is the approach to attain the goal. Right. Uh, what are the achievements that took place in the domain of combating corruption since Egypt joined the agreement in December 2003? Well, there are different uh, policies that have been uh, uh, applied. Uh, the, we have the strategy now. Even recently, the strategy of Egypt that was done in 2019 is published in Arabic and in, and in English. We have uh, very strict control measures in fighting corruption and in facilitating uh, all different elements in order that our, our funds reach for development and balance development and not be absorbed down the drain in corruption. Right. Uh, what are the other administrative and legal means of reaching the target of uprooting corruption in Egypt? Well, we have uh, strong uh, laws. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have the constitution. We have strong laws. We have institutions also, because this, uh, this conference in Sharm el is held by the administrative control authority. And we have also other uh, authorities that are responsible for making sure to uh, fight corruption and to even prevent corruption, not only wait till corruption happens and fight it, but also to prevent it. And what's new is also involving women in fighting corruption and uh, acknowledging the role of women in, in fighting corruption. Right. Well, uh, uh, what do you think will be uh, the expected uh, recommendations and outcomes of this gathering? There will be recommendations on uh, legal level, on institutional level, but also most important is the sharing of experience. Sharing of experiences helps each other, uh, countries to learn from each other and helps to uh, also learn from the civil society institutions about their experience. Right. Well, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Dr. Noha Bakr, Professor of Political Science. Many thanks for your insight and valuable information. And uh, moving on to our next report, uh, Egypt hosts the ninth session of the Conference of State Parties to the United States uh, Convention Against Corruption from 13th to 17th of December in Sharm el-Sheikh, according to UN's official website. More details. Egypt prepares to host the Conference of the State Parties in 